Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's going to be What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome to today's show, Friday. We made it. Uh, another uh, beautiful day outside here, anyways. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. It's supposed to be 80 degrees here today. So, exciting stuff. Um, good morning, Blanca. Good morning, Jean. Uh, thank God it's Friday. That's right. Uh, what's up, Nim? Good to see you. Uh, Lynn, what's up? Doing well, thank you. It's a gorgeous day. Anne's got a gorgeous day as well. Uh, woke up this way. What's up, Alexandra? Good morning, Ashley. What up, Fran? And Anne, what's up? It's good to see all of you guys. Uh, you guys know you guys know the drill. Um, just hit the share button if you can. Share this with all of your friends. Today, what we're going to be focusing on is a curly. Uh, haircut. We're going to do a curly layered haircut together. Um, and then also it's request Friday. We're going to make this request Friday. So, uh, anything you guys want to see, post that in the chat. Let's put an R before your request so I can see that. If you want to see something, you want to see a technique, put R and then the request. If you have a question, put Q and then put your question. Uh, that way in the chat, I can see it. I see all of you guys, uh, blowing up on the chat now. So super exciting. The other thing I want to tell you guys is that I've got a new phone number. Uh, so this is the new phone number. What I want you guys to do, if you're on your phone now, uh, just memorize it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you're on your phone now, obviously don't text me. Uh, just write it down. But it's 215-608-2612. That is my phone number. Text me. Come straight to my phone. Um, and that'll get you on our list. And what I do is um, it's a personal thing. So any text you get will be coming from me personally uh and when you send a text you'll send it to me personally um but before i go live or before i do anything or if i put out a new video i'll text you and let you know which is um, a great way to communicate because i know it goes to you guys and you'll never miss anything so text me 215-608-2612 and uh we'll get you on there all right uh so i filmed a new video it's a curly haircut I uh, can't wait to share it with you guys. I'm going to do a live voiceover, so post your questions as we go through it. Um, also, make sure that you download the FSE Now app. Um, I've got a couple other videos lined up, but if there's something that you guys want to see today, let me know because we're going to uh, post that as well. Um, let's see. Cool. I'm glad. It's it's awesome to see all of you guys saying hello to each other. Um, we've, we're like, this is episode 18, I think, or 19, something like that. Um, I think 19, so we're, we're going strong, guys, uh, every day of the week. So, let's see. All right. Foiling techniques. Oh, Blanca, that's a good one. Let me, uh, let me remove that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, foiling techniques. We could definitely do some kind of foiling technique today. I can share with you. Um, and fail-proof, which will be good. Um, I need to make peace with my curly hair. Odetta, um, well, we're going to share with you guys some techniques today that might help you make that piece. Um, all right, cool. And then I want to share some of you guys from the community as well. Some of you guys have been posting your images up, so I want to share that. Uh, Ashley's actually been killing it in the community, um, so I'll, I'll share her page as well on there. Uh, and that's it. Formulation tips, uh, Rosany. You can actually ask me any of those questions you want, and we can talk about formulation a little bit. Uh, I have no problem with that. So as we get going in the show, we can talk about formulation. Uh, I want to stick in and make sure that we commit to doing a curly layered haircut at the beginning of this show, and then we're going to go off the rails and do whatever you guys want, or we can stick to curly hair if you want. Uh, let me know um, as we're going through it. So let's get into the technique. So the video, I have it right here. So um, we'll pop it up and I'm going to pause it. So this uh, haircut is 
pretty fun because I mix up, obviously, again, uh, razor and scissor uh, to create face frame and movement and all that stuff. So uh, I think you guys are going to really dig this one. So what I'm doing is that it's based off of a center parting. Uh, and I clip the uh, hair away and then I section it off as a round section following the round of the head. So basically half an inch up from the hairline, follow the hairline behind the ear. And that's going to be my first section. And then I bring it over to me. So notice in this area here, as I bring this hair over, I'll pause it right there. Notice the elevation that I'm working at, right? So it's coming straight off of the head, um, slightly about 45 degrees up from the head shape. So where it would come directly straight up, it's about 45 degrees. That's going to keep it nice and soft, uh, but still build up a little bit of weight uh, in this uh, fringe area. So now I'm going to start by cutting with my scissors. I've also got the carving comb in my hand. It's the carving comb wide, uh, so it's loose tension. Anytime I'm working with curly hair, I like to be light with the tension. You can see how that frames her face already. And now what I'm going to do is drop my elevation. So now look at my elevation here in this part of the, the video. See how my fingers are now, my elbow drops. My fingers are pointing straight up at the ceiling uh, because this is a different part of the head. So as I work through this, you're going to see... Um, when I get to that round, right around uh, the hair, the, the recession area, when I get there, then I drop my elevation because the head shape shifts. So now I slide with the razor. So now I'm working both tools at the same time. The reason I slide with the razor instead of cutting, you could cut if you want to, but I get a more scooped effect with the razor and it's just a little more natural for me uh, to work through it that way. So again, take it at the recession point here or the parietal ridge, you could say. Then I bring it over to me, keeping that 45 degree elevation. And as it works in the back of the head, that elevation will drop a little bit, but we're keeping a consistent stationary guide right there in the front fringe. So uh, Johnny's saying, so no over direction, just straight in front. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just straight in front of the section, not really any over direction per se. I'm cutting it right over the nose is basically what I'm doing. Uh, so same sectioning, continuing back, uh, round partings, working behind the ear, pulling everything forward. So now as I work my way back, I want to soften uh, the shape that's happening on top. So when I cut blunt with a scissor, I get a really hard line. So now that I'm working more on top of the head and uh, with a much lower elevation, I'm just going to go straight razor. So I've still got the scissor in my hand. I could use it to cut, point cut, do whatever I want. But as I'm going through it, I'm just using that razor to cut to soften this shape uh, through. See if there's any other questions from you guys. <laughs> What's up, Johnny? Where are you tuning in from? Let us know. Uh, dry curly haircut, curl by curl. All right, cool. All right, I don't see any other questions. So you can see all that layering, all that stuff that's happening uh, in the face frame. So now I take a little piece out as my guideline, and then I'm going to continue on to the opposite side. Uh, I did prep the hair, and this is, I forgot to shoot it before, um, so I shot it in the middle. But I did prep that side with Donald Scott Prepare, which helps glide the hair, helps keep the hair conditioned when you're razor cutting. It's specifically made to be a cutting tool uh, or a cutting tool glide for the hair to keep the hair nice and healthy, help section the hair, and then also help the razor glide through the hair. So um, I'm using the Donald Scott Carving Comb. I'm also using the Donald Scott Prepare. All of these products are available on freesaloneducation.com uh, if you're looking for a new razor. It's 39 bucks. Uh, I think the Prepare is like, I don't know, 14 bucks maybe, something like that. That's a total guess, but uh, <laughs> go on there and check it out. So I'm doing the same thing on this side, over directing uh, everything straight out from the head, uh, cutting it at that angle, following the parting, mimicking the parting, and then uh, working that razor down the rest of the section from parietal ridge down to the temple area. Oh, I get it, Johnny. All right. You're watching from YouTube, not Facebook. Got it. Got it. I'm slow. I'm slow. It's Friday. Um, Snowden, what's up? Welcome. All right. So uh, to catch everybody up, if you're just checking in, um, it's an over direction. We're pulling everything out, cutting with our scissor from parietal ridge up, and then everything from parietal ridge down. We're gliding 
the razor through uh, just to create that scooping effect and create a lot of layers around the face. So that's really the goal of this haircut. Um, this is going to be styled very curly. So even though her hair doesn't look super curly right now, it's going to be styled very curly. So uh, you guys will see the end result on curly hair and what it would look like uh, with this shape. So once I get back about three inches uh, on the head shape from the hairline, that's when I go all razor. I go all in on the razor because I'm trying to soften the shape. I'm trying to remove some weight. I want those layers to fall and be really nice and have a lot of movement to it. So I uh, switch just to razor from, the, from about three inches up back. So now you can see how those layers start really short, get longer towards the back. And now we're gonna go into the back here and I'm gonna glide the 50% cutting side of the carving comb through the back. And where I figure out where I want to do that is right at that occipital bone where the head starts to curve in. That's where I glide that razor in because that builds that volume up uh, right at the occipital bone, which creates a really cool shape in the hair. So you can see all those layers popping through. Uh, we're going to use Joyco Joy Whip hold number seven. Uh, it's a firm hold uh, foam. It has a super firm hold, so you don't need a lot of it. Uh, I run it through the hair and then I'm going to diffuse it. Uh, to work it through. And I've got a video for you guys on some diffusing techniques. Uh, also, I'm putting in Joyco Defy Damage. Um, that's like a, it's a heat protectant, but it's also a bond protector as well. So I put that in the hair and then we diffuse it. You can see all the layers, the explosion of layers, the fringe, all of that stuff that we've created uh, looks super cool. And the last little bit that I do is I go in and I do a little bit of dry cut shaping. So I'll do a little tease cutting throughout um, just to kind of work that shape in. You can see how it collapses in the back. I take out some of that hairline area and I define my line with some tease cutting and then around the face just a little bit, add a little extra tease cutting. I'm gonna break down um, tease cutting for you guys in a second. Uh, we'll do that live so that you guys can get an idea of what it's all about, but here you go. And I actually need a pair of scissors to do that for you. I'll find them. We'll be good. I'll break it down in this show. So you can see tease cutting uh, is really just an open and close, moving halfway in, halfway open, halfway closed throughout uh, the technique. All right, cool. I see it. I see it. Uh, Jess McCud's on the app and uh, Ashley's loving the work. Very cool. Very cool. Let me see. All right, so pop this stuff up. Okay, so what'd you guys think of that video? Carmen, appreciate it. Love that silhouette, Ashley, cool. Yes, finally, how is everyone? Missed you guys, what's up, Kristen? Hope your move was good, hope you're in your place. Uh, love the look, thank you. Odette likes it, all right, cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, you guys are awesome. Uh, I'm glad you guys like that video. If you want to see the replay, obviously, if you're just checking in, uh, you can watch it later. This, this whole show will be available for replay as we go. Now, um, if you guys have questions, post those. Otherwise, um, I've got another video for you guys. I do want to find some foiling techniques for you as well. Um, so we'll be on the search for that. Let's see. Uh, all right, I want to show you guys the app real quick. So let me see if I can put that up on there. Right here, phone view. There we go. So the FSE Now app is available. The new app update came out yesterday. So if you guys haven't downloaded that and you don't seem to be getting notifications, you probably don't have the latest update. So go update it. Um, it's got, you know, all obviously all of the step-by-step -step videos. It's got all the shows uh, all the Woke Up This Way shows like you're watching now, uh, podcasts, cutting, color, um, style techniques, all kinds of stuff, men's hair. Um, so go on there. And it's also uh, got our beautiful community with everybody posting all of their different uh, techniques. Uh, here's here's Jessica right here. Um, and then Rosany, we've got Angel. So everybody's putting beautiful work up there. It's really cool to see Megan um let's see where is and there's emma so here's ashley right so here's ashley's profile and this is what i want you guys to understand is that um you're creating a profile and you can put all of your work on there it's showing up beautiful this is ashley's page looks really good um and then 
all of her information that you can see there that you can find her, um, book an appointment with her, goes to our website called stylistlocator.com. If you put in, if somebody puts in her zip code or a place near her zip code, her profile is gonna come up and a client can send her a message and be like, oh my God, I love your work. I would love to get my hair done by you. And you guys can message back and forth. You'll get your message directly um, on the app. So you can message back and forth. Uh, you can check through all of your messages by tapping on the person and you can message new clients and, and have a conversation. So uh, super cool. So if you haven't built a profile on FSE now, at this point, you should go on there and do it. Uh, we have tons of stylists on there and everybody's sharing away, sharing away. So uh, make sure you're sharing this show, joining in in the chat. It's over here, down. <laughs> and uh, and that's it. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, I really appreciate all of you guys in the chat, blowing it up. Um, it's cool to see. It's very cool to see. And thank you guys for everybody putting your beautiful work on FSE now. Uh, Christina and I really appreciate that. All right, so. Do, do, do. Let's see. Going back to here. All right, guys. So um, the next video, this is going to be from Sam Villa. Um, Sam Villa kind of, I wouldn't say partnered with the show, but he definitely, I, I reached out to Andrew Crothers and I was like, listen, I'm making this request show uh, where hairstylists can request different techniques. Um, I know you guys have a huge library. Would you guys be willing to share some of your videos? And they literally said, here is a document. So you can open any video you want, get to it, download it, uh, and play it. So um, thank you so much to Sam Via for, for allowing that partnership. I got to get him on the show soon um, just to have a chat with him, see how things are going. But um, this is a curly technique from Sam, and I'm going to play it right now for you guys. So enjoy. Here is Sam Via. Hi, my friends, Sam Via here, Redkins Global Artistic Ambassador. Today, I want to share with you a really cool technique to go in and create a crinkled or waved effect to enhance an organic texture, which we will be seeing. So let's get started. I'm going to work with our Artist Series blow dryer and with the diffuser that comes with the blow dryer. The product of choice, now an option and necessity is going to be Redken Stay High 18. I love this because it gives me the result of a gel and a mousse combined together in one container. Now we're going to go through, I've applied my product, so now we're going to come through, we're going to work with our hands. Now just a real simple technique, so I want you to think of your hands as the tool to create the crinkle or the wave effect. So I'm going to go to a number three, look at the number three. So I'm going to place three fingers in, and now I'm just going to push these. So I'm taking my index finger and my ring finger. I'm pushing it opposite where I'm pushing my finger, ring finger, so I create more of a wave pattern. Now the last finger that comes on top is the pinky, and I push this way. So if you take a look at this, and you can start to see how I've got that shape working through. Look at the S pattern. Follow it from the top view and from the front view. You can just see how I crinkled the hair. So now just see that. Watch again. You start with three fingers. Okay, now watch me just take this section, random section I pick, and push it the opposite way. Now my pinky comes on top, and I push it all the opposite way. So this middle finger is going this direction, this finger is pushing the opposite direction, this middle finger is pushing the hair that direction, so you can see how I'm just weaving it, so I get an S pattern. Now I'm going to take a diffuser and the blow dryer, and now I spread my fingers, and I place it on low heat, low speed, and you just simply come in and diffuse. The airflow is allowed through by separating your fingers. The Stay High 18 is giving me the control that I want. So watch how you'll, when I release, you'll see the undulation and the wave pattern from it. So I want you to imagine a client that has a small amount of texture, a small amount of movement in their hair. So then when you want to enhance it, go in with this technique and watch that wave pattern. So you can just start to see the wave pattern that I'm getting out of that. And now I'm just simply going through and I'm just simply working random sections. Watch how that number three pushes it. Look, I push the hair, then my finger comes, my pinky comes on top and goes the opposite way. Now spread it and you can just start to see the S pattern that you're creating and the diffuser comes in through. So just a real simple way to create more of a crinkled effect, a soft waved effect by working with a diffuser, keeping your air, your blow dryer on low speed and high heat. At Sam Via, we're all about making hairdressers better hairdressers and we believe that happens through the process of education. Thanks for watching.
All right. So there you go, guys. Zambia. It's pretty cool uh, technique. We filmed that right here in the FSE studio. So uh, it was a great time. We spent the whole day filming a bunch of stuff for uh, Sam. So um, what, what I'm going to play for you guys next is a super extra curly haircut. Um, so I think you guys will like it. There was somebody uh, in the chat. I think it was Jean. She says, Matt, I only see... Where's it at? Oh, wait. I'm way up. There we go. She said, Matt... Oh, there it is. I can only see my post, not anyone else. So here's the thing, Jean. Uh, when you're in the app, there's a button, which you might not have seen, but up here... Oh, other side. Up here right over there is feed and then my posts if you click my posts then you're only going to see your posts the ones that you've put up if you click feed then you're you'll see everybody uh katie's busting out some beautiful work there nice job katie way to post um so then you'll see everybody else's work um building up a cool profile where's she from cedar falls iowa right on all right, cool. So, um, so that's the deal. So you got to click my posts or feed, not my posts. And I think that's probably the issue. If there, if there's a different issue, um, just send me an email or text me. Actually, text me, uh, and then we can go back and forth. That'll be the easiest, um, so that I can see your message and all that. Um, Snowden left. What? See you, Snowden. Uh, all right, cool guys. So. Uh, the next video is an extra curly haircut, extra curly bob, um, super fun haircut. I use multiple different techniques in it. I start cutting it wet and then I go into some dry cutting, some tease cutting at the end. After this video, I'll break down tease cutting for you guys uh, even more so that you guys can see that. And then I'm also going to get into a foil video uh, that I'm trying to pull up right now. So um, enjoy this extra curly cut. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, my hair cutter friends out there, I know you're really excited to see this video. I was really excited to do this video. So we got super extra curly hair. A couple things I'm going to do different than I would normally do on straight, uh, straighter hair is go through with the leave-in conditioner. I did that. I also go through with the paddle brush and completely uh, brush through it to make sure it's nice and clean um, because that's going to make it easier to work with the curls. Then I go through and I section off the hair. Sectioning is so important with every haircut that you do. It's also really important with curly hair. I'm not a believer in just cutting curly hair dry. I really like to go in there, build a structure with a purpose, and then go in with some dry cutting at the end. So I think you guys are going to get the benefits of all of that throughout this video. So I section off a rectangular section on the top following the parietal ridge across mid crown like I always do in my videos. If you haven't seen the past videos, definitely subscribe and uh, go back and watch those. But we uh, then we take it and we do the division point, which is the halfway point of the head right behind the ear. And then I go straight down the back with a vertical section. And then I take across the occipital bone. So if you need to rewind it back and watch that again, but the sectioning is pretty simple across the occipital bone, and that's where we're going to start is at the base of the hair. Now, another product I'm going to use as a tool as I work through this haircut is our Donald Scott Prepare uh, Spray. It's a liquid tool glide. Now, this is a product that you've seen in past videos that I've used uh, when razor cutting. That's really what it's made for because it's made to add a little bit of that uh, pure coconut and sunflower oil to the hair to help get through the hair and add a little bit of slip to it. But it also works really great for conditioning the hair and working through curly hair as well. So I spray that on each section before I cut it just to make it easier to comb through. Now, I'm going to start with vertical sections, about half inch sections as I work through the back. And I'm going to work on a traveling guide when I start the base. So I just work bringing the hair to the previous section. I'm using the wide teeth of my comb. This is the 339 comb from YS Park. I'm also using my Pen Slim Mizutani scissor. It's my new favorite scissor to use. Um, it's got a really skinny blade, so it's easy to work tight in your fingers. Um, this hair is a medium texture, even though it is super curly. Um, so that's a good scissor choice for me. It's a six inch scissor. 
So as I work down that section, um, I'm combing through with the wide teeth. I don't want to put a ton of tension on the hair, but I also don't want to work through with super wide teeth. If you feel like you have to work through the hair with really wide teeth, you probably haven't brushed through the hair enough. So make sure that you condition the hair the right way, go through with that paddle brush, then you should be able to work with a tighter tooth comb, which is going to give you a more consistent result uh, when you're cutting the hair. So now I've switched my finger angle. So before I was pointing up as I worked across the head. Now I'm pointing down. The reason for that is whenever you're cutting a bob, uh, if you guys think about how sometimes you end up with one side longer than the other, it's because you're not combing the hair towards your guideline. So on one side you would be, but if I kept my fingers the same way and I worked across the head the other way, then I would be combing the wrong way. So I always want to comb that new hair into the guide so I'm pushing the hair towards the center on the right side and I'm pushing the hair towards the center on the left side. You could see that nice buildup of weight. The thing I love about curly hair and what was really inspiring me about cutting hair like this is just because you can really see the shape happen. When you cut straight hair, you have to actually give it volume and you have to try to create and make that shape. With curly hair, you see it instantly. It's instant gratification. It's my kind of thing. So as I work through, I'm uh, creating that shape. I can really see it. Now, I'm still working those half inch sections vertical. The great thing about this right now is that if I keep um, working vertically straight up the head in a layering fashion, so pretty much 90 degrees straight out, I'm still going to get that stack because of the curly hair. A lot of people have challenges with curly hair because they can't see the end result while they're cutting. You want to make sure that you take into consideration the fact that the curly hair is going to stack up a lot more than straight hair is. Now, another key thing that I'm doing right here, I'm over directing all the way to the center. You saw me kind of move with my comb. I want to build up weight behind the ear and I want to start pushing the length uh, the opposite direction. I want to push it towards the front of the face. So we're going to close off the face a little bit. So I over direct it and now you can see that weight build up right behind the ear. It looks really nice, but it's still a nice sleek back. It's not expanding too much. Um, this would definitely be your guest preference. So if your guest wants a bigger shape in the back, then add a little bit more of an angle to your fingers, drop your elevation a little bit, and you'll get uh, a bigger uh, buildup of weight in the back. But I really like uh, having a nice sleek back on this haircut. So now, again, pointing my fingers down. Um, this is where it becomes a little bit challenging because anytime my elbow's up in the air, I want to drop my hand. So just make sure you're focused on that elevation and staying consistent with that. You'll also notice that in the very beginning of that part, after I cut the section, I went through and I did a little cross-checking to make sure that my elevation was correct. So um, another good thing to do as you're working through the back of the head. The other thing with curly hair that I definitely uh, notice when working with it is that it's a lot harder to see your guide because you don't have as much of a solid line. So take a little bit extra uh, guide into your section and a little less new hair as you're working through. Uh, and it'll be a lot easier to stay consistent throughout the haircut. So we're pulling through the last bit of the section, again, keeping that over direction all the way back to push that weight uh, forward. Now, if they have a little bit looser curl, you wouldn't have to over direct it quite so far. And what we're doing right now is we're preparing that hair. So as I push it forward, I'm preparing it to do something later. So I want all that weight sitting in the front of her head because then I can go through in my dry cutting and create that shape. So we're going to take a nice horizontal section in the temple area. We've moved on to the next panel. Um, I'm going to comb that down, keep it nice and natural. Use my comb to kind of see how I want that to fall. But then notice where I held my comb, where I want the hair to fall, and where I actually cut the hair. It's about two inches further down because I'm taking into consideration the fact that that curl is going to it's going to shrink up as soon as I cut it. So I cut my baseline, my guideline, right along the chin, and then I go through and I create these layers uh, by elevating the hair. So I'm going to start working. Um, I'm going to create a stationary guide. Everything's going to be over-directed back towards me. What I really want to do in this haircut is push all that weight around the front of the face, and then I can go in and have some fun with the dry cutting. So uh, complete over-direction back to that stationary guide uh, as I work through this side. Instant gratification is what I love. I love uh, cutting curly hair and just seeing the shape unfold. 
So you can see how it works through the back, nice and sleek in the back. Doing the same thing on the opposite side. So I take a small, uh, about inch section, comb it down nice and natural, check where I want that line to be. And then as I hold the hair down, I shift my finger angle to fit that line and I do my cutting. So about two inches further than I actually want uh, the hair to live. And that'll give me that nice line there. Then we go through, same thing, going through and cutting the layering. Now you're gonna notice I'm cutting palm to palm. Uh, again, anytime you're cutting on top of your fingers, and right now I'd have to lift my elbow in the air. Anytime I can, not, I can go ahead and not lift my elbow in the air and stay more consistent, I do it. So um, I just tilt her head towards me a little bit more. That's the great thing about the client is you can move their head to fit your elevation needs. So I, I pull her head towards me and I can cut palm to palm and stay more consistent. Now to finish off, this is the final stretch of the wet part of the haircut. I'm going to go through, take these uh, kind of horizontal or vertical straps, whatever you want to call them, but straight across the top and overdirect everything back towards me, creating a stationary guide again. Uh, so that'll build up a little more weight in her crown area, but then push the rest of the weight to the front. I'm using point cutting because I want a little more texture on the top of the hair. So even with curly hair, even though it's going to be textured, if I do a little bit of point cutting, it's going to give it some more separation. So I go through the top and I complete that. So just overdirecting everything straight back to the crown, uh, the beginning of the crown, more the apex area, top of the head, and just point cutting through. Now I like showing you guys every step of the way. If you like seeing a, a shorter version of these cuts, you can definitely check out uh, my Instagram page, which is at Free Salon Education, um, where, where I'll cut it up and make it a one minute video, um, which could be a cool inspiration. It's a great way to show your clients the haircut as well, if it's something that you wanna do on them. Uh, so check out the Instagram if you get a chance. So that's the last little bit, over directing everything straight back to that stationary guide and just cutting it following the round of the head on the very top. So you can see all of that volume that happened. That's what I loved about the, the initial picture of this haircut. Now I'm gonna use my Bricado mousse. I'm gonna go in, saturate the hair with the mousse. It's a nice medium hold, doesn't get real crunchy. Uh, I wanted more of a natural feel to it. Um, once I get that in the hair, I'll go through and I'll actually put a little bit more in there because curly hair soaks it up. So a little bit more on the ends and then we'll start our styling. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, Ergo blow dryer. I'm gonna put it on medium airflow and the hottest heat level. So I don't want a ton of air going into the hair because that's gonna make it frizzy, but I do want it nice and hot so it dries the hair nice and quick. So uh, that's always a good setting on no matter what blow dryer you have to put it at that setting. And I go through and I just diffuse the hair, not putting my hands in the hair a lot, just going through and using the diffuser and letting it do its job. Now I'm gonna go through and detail the perimeter. So I'm using my scissor, and a lot of you guys have asked me why do I cut hair holding the scissor that way? It has everything to do with being comfortable. So sometimes when I, if I'd have to tweak my wrist and kind of turn my wrist a certain way, I like to switch my thumb and put it in the other direction, and that helps me stay more comfortable in my cutting. I will come out with a video to uh, show you guys how that's done and why, and get a little more in depth with it later on. Okay, just finishing up the perimeter. I really am just etching out what I want that outer perimeter to look like in the haircut. You can see all the extra weight sitting around the cheek. That's what we're gonna cut now um, with our dry cutting portion of the video. So moving into that, I'm going to be using my puffin scissor. This is the Mizutani puffin. It's made for dry cutting. A lot of people don't like using razors on uh, on curly hair. I have no problem with razors on curly hair, but it has to be a brand new blade. Now, if you use the Mizutani Puffin, you can get a razored effect without actually using a razor on the curly hair. So I'm gonna go through doing a tease cutting technique. I've done multiple videos on this technique. And I, so what I do is I just pinch the hair and I start etching out the shape that I want. So I'm half closing the scissor on the hair and just sliding in. So don't close the scissor all the way, just work the hair down into the scissor, pinch it into the blade and half close the blade as you move in and out and it'll start to etch it out. You can see how it just quickly transforms that side of the haircut to uh, have a more flattering look to it. 
So we just go through using the tease cutting technique and creating our shape. So that is the end result of the haircut. I'm gonna add a little bit of hairspray to it. I hope you guys like this haircut. I really dig the outcome of it. I love the texture, love the shape of it. Um, so let me know what type of haircuts you'd like to see more of in the comments below. All right, <laughs> sometimes they just get cut off real quick. All right, so um, very cool. I'm glad you guys liked it. I can see uh, you know, all the, the nice comments and everything. Uh, this makes me wish I had curly hair, I love it. Uh, tapered Haircut is doing so well with curly hair. Um, Facebook page, same name. Um, I'm guessing, I think you guys are sharing sharing all of your stuff so there was a question uh lynn welcome to the to the show welcome to the live stream um she said she's been watching for a long time and uh and i i know because i i've seen your name for a long time <laughs> but uh there is okay there's a few few things here's sherry she's saying how do you determine what sectioning you start with a rectangular top sides across occipital question mark the top the diamond in the back I hope my question makes sense. There are so many different ways to start a cut with certain sectioning. So, uh, Sherry, that's a great question. Um, I think a lot of people have that same question. We'll bring Baldy over here. You guys seem to love this. I got lots of messages about the bald head. But um, when you look at the head shape, right? It's got a ton of curves in it. Um, so when I section the hair, I basically base everything off of those curves, right? So if you look at the head, the first curve that I think about, um, I figure out where the client's parting her hair is number one. And then based on where she's parting her hair, um, you've got the parietal ridge, which is this curve here. So it's this whole round of the head. So you could take a horseshoe section. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna se separate all of the different curves of the head um, so that I have the most success. Because if you don't understand where you're at in a section, where you're at, where you're holding it, what the elevation is, you're not gonna understand the weight distribution that happens when you let it go, right? After you cut it and you let it go, what's it gonna do? So if you go parietal ridge over, um, obviously in the mid crown area, um, there's a curve here. And then I separate the front and the back because there's a curve here, right? So this is another curve, so I separate that, but then I go to the hairline. So I always section right to this hairline area instead of going um, right at the ear, because if I go right at the ear, you've got just this much of the hair right here that's the same density as this part here. But then once you shift past this corner and you've got this whole hairline that drops, now you've got this much density that you're working with as opposed to this much density in your cut. So that's how I separate it. So I separate the top and I separate the front and the back. And then everything beyond that is just to keep me organized. So if I section diagonally or I split this in two or I go to the occipital bone, like that's another curb. It's all just separating it to keep myself organized. But the main sections that I always do in every haircut is to go top and sides. Uh, to separate. So I hope that helps, uh, Sherry. And um, let's see. I know there was another question here. I know the question, I know what the question was. I just wanted to put the person's name up here, but um, I know it was Lynn as well, but I just wanted to throw her question on the thing. But I can't see it. I, but the question was tension wise. Uh, how much tension was I putting on that haircut? Um, as little as possible is basically the answer to that. Um, anytime I'm working with, um, I call it extra curly hair. I know there are number sequences that go with curly hair. I'm not a curly hair expert. Um, I just like cutting hair. So um, I don't understand the, the numbers of curly hair. I'm, I would like to learn them and I'd like to get somebody on this show um, that can really break that down and educate everybody on it. Um, but as we go through it, like, um, in extra curly hair, I like to hold less tension because it's gonna spring back, obviously. And then also a key thing that I want you guys to take from that video is that when I pulled the hair down to cut a section, I pulled the hair down, figured out what line and angle I wanted, and then I went a little bit past that and then cut um, because I knew it was gonna spring back, especially in the wet cut. So, um, get Johnny. Um, 
So I see your message. S send me her information. Oh, that would be great. Send it through Instagram, and then I can send um, her a message and see. Uh, Greg Gilmore. Okay, cool. If you guys want, text me. Uh, text me on uh, this phone number here. Boom. Oh, right here. This phone number. Uh, if you guys know of a curly hair expert that would, would be great on this show that you guys would love to hear from, uh, that would be awesome. Text this phone number and tell me who it is. Just put curly hair person um, on the on the uh, front of that text and text it to me. It'll go straight to my phone and then I can uh, reach out to them um, because I would love to have anybody on. But uh, Johnny, I know that you can easily DM me. So just uh, DM me who it is. And Kristen seems to be into that as well. So very cool. Um, love to meet this person. Um, all right. So what do you guys think? You enjoying the show? I have uh, a foilage technique uh, that we're going to play. And this is from Jamie Dana. So Jamie Dana is a super talented uh, hairstylist, su super smart business uh, person. Uh, so with social media and all of that, she's got a great following. A lot of you guys know who she is. Um, she also opened up this show to her content and because it's request show Friday, uh, and you guys requested foil work, which I don't do a lot of foil work, but Jamie does, and she's great at it. So, uh, I'm going to show you guys a foilage technique from her. Uh, we can get into the conversation, have fun with it. And, uh, you guys can let me know what you think about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that video up right now, uh, and share it with you guys. So let's see, got Jamie here. So here it is. Enjoy the video, guys, and uh, post your questions if you have uh, any. I'm going to separate them as I see them in the chat, and then I'll answer them after the show. We'll do a little Q&A, and then we'll call it a day, and I'll see you guys soon, okay? So here is Jamie Dana's foilage technique. Um, this is going to be my technique of how I do blonder for a refresh of a balayage. Stay tuned. Alright, so this is our before. As you guys can see, we did a little bit of a balayage last time. You guys can see it's grown out, but it's time to refresh it. Now tonight we're gonna go a little bit blonder. We're gonna bring up the blonde up into here and then brighten up these ends a little bit and then give her a little trim. So I'm excited to show you guys how I refresh a blonde balayage. And I guess this wouldn't be considered a blonde balayage. This would be more of a brunette balayage, but I'm excited to show you guys kind of my technique for doing that. So let's go mix up. Last time we did Blondor with 20 volume, but today we're going to do Blondor with 30 volume because we want a little bit more of a kick. So usually if I am doing like a refresh of the virgin root and then kind of tipping out the ends, I do two separate developers, one a little stronger in the regrowth and then one a little bit lighter for the lighter ends. But for her, she wants to go a lot blonder today. So we are going to do just one uniform uh, developer all throughout. So like I said, we're going to do Blondor and 30 and then I will add Olaplex in just to ensure that we keep her ends really healthy. So mix that up. I usually don't measure out my bleach. I go off consistency. That's what works for me. And um, one tip too I always do is I always mix up my lightener and I use a brush that is just going to be like our mixing brush so that it can get messy and then I'll go back through and use a clean brush when we apply the lightener so that we don't have like a mixing brush that's like all messy and then you go through and apply the lightener with a messy brush. I'm gonna do just about a sixteenth of an ounce of Olaplex in there so it doesn't, we don't have to increase the developer. Just kind of mix that in. And I mix my consistency a little bit thinner than most people um, because we are doing a foilage, not a balayage. So this is gonna be going in a foil so it doesn't matter to me. I don't want it thick, I want it pretty um, thin consistency. As part of my foilage technique, I actually do use a conditioner to act as a buffer in between where the line of demarcation, where the hair starts and where my lightener starts. So this is my favorite conditioner that I found. I'm always looking for a really lightweight conditioner, um, but this one's from Goldwell. It's a dual senses conditioner. It's our color conditioner. I actually just stumbled upon it one day. I just was using it and I really actually like it. Um, so I just do a couple pumps into my bowl here. Um, but you guys can see the consistency of it is super lightweight. It's like almost like watery, so that's why we like using that. For sectioning, I work off their natural part of where they normally part their hair. Then I'm gonna section the top of the ears, kind of like going from that natural part down to the 
just behind the ear and I'll section out kind of the front from the back and I clip this away with a clip. I don't do any crazy sectioning or anything that's like insane. But I just kind of clip it away so that I can work in the back section. I'll do this on both sides and then we'll section the back. And you guys, my client has a birthmark, a gray streak back here. I love that. Anytime I find that, I get so excited. If you're a hairstylist and find the birthmark in your client like so intriguing, uh, comment in the section below because I just find it so happy. And my, my client's like totally laughing. <laughs> All right, so usually for the first section, I like to weave it and kind of leave a little bit out, and then I'm always gonna tease it too. And I like using a really fine tooth uh, weaving comb so that I can get that teased area. And I'm not teasing a ton, but just a little bit to break it up. And then I use these longer foils. Um, I get these from Smart and Final, but these are the foils that you would use to wrap a burrito. So we just get these and we tear them in half. They're awesome because they allow me to have a little bit more of a good surface to paint on, and they're super cheap. Then I'm gonna take my lightweight conditioner and just kind of paint that root area, just below the teased area. And then I'll go in with my lightener and apply it right through. Now she does have a little bit of blonde through the end, so I'm just gonna kind of feather that through. I don't wanna go crazy and saturate it because it is gonna be in a foil, so we wanna make sure that we're you know, keeping the integrity of her hair. But all I'm doing is I'm kind of feathering it up into that conditioner. Um, avoiding the teased area. So we are leaving a little bit of a root because this is more of a balayage look um, versus it being you know, a highlighted look. So we are gonna leave a little bit there. And then I'll take a shorter foil and place it right on top and fold it up and just kind of lock it in place with the corner. Two sections around the hairline and now I'm gonna do a straight across one. This is just to break up the pattern because now we have B, B, and then now we're gonna go straight across. If we kept doing Bs, what would happen is you would only have lightness through here and you wouldn't have any through the middle. So that's why I think it's important to kind of almost like brick lay kind of your pattern. So I'll do a deep B. Um, some clients, depending on how much depth they want, I will do a, a much bigger B. Um, but for her, she wants to be a little bit blonder and I want to have to take out a little bit more of this depth. So I'll do a little bit smaller of a B. Um, but this allows me to still have depth within the internal, but then also to create some uh, lightness throughout the inside. I moved up the head, I did two diagonal back sections to one across section, and now we're kind of at this triangle here at the top of the head. Um, so I could continue doing diagonal back, but the problem is you may get pieces like this that go across the head. So usually what I try to do is I do um, just straight across sections, and I'm making sure that I'm weaving them really well and teasing them so that I don't get any lines. But this usually creates a really nice uh, flow across the hair when they wear their hair down. was I feathered my lightener kind of up into here and I am blending it with this brush but you guys can see that there's a few spots where I just want to clean up a little bit kind of right in there right in there so I'm just gonna take my clean brush and kind of just brush it down wipe it off on my towel brush it down this is almost acting as like a blur brush or like an eraser so um, this helps just kind of blend anything a little bit more you guys can just see how much more smooth that looks by just blending that through All the way through the back we're gonna work our way around the front but you guys can see I've just done the diagonal backs and then down the center and we still have these ends that are lightened uh, you know through here so this will give us our brightness to the end if this was somebody that had virgin hair I maybe might go back through and kind of lighten these at the end but um, because she already has some lightness in there I'm not too worried about it uh, but you co totally could do that if your client wants more brightness I want to make sure that we're getting this nice pop of blonde in the front she's got a lot of baby hairs right so we're gonna um, do kind of the top. So all I do is I take away my section and I'm gonna start about an inch away from the hairline. So we'll start kind of right about there and then we'll start my foils and I do about three back to back like baby light foils just to get this nice pop of brightness in the front and so that when she wears her hair back, you still have this like nice blonde in the front and it doesn't have like chunkiness going on. So I'm just gonna go through her part. Do like I said, about an inch away. And some people you have to do more, some people you have to do less. She has like a thicker hairline on this side, and then on her other, this kind of side is a little bit thinner, it's more baby hairs. Um, so it's kind of just dependent on each client. Obviously you're customizing it for each client. So this is about how thick I'm gonna make my hairline section. You guys can see kind of right through there. 
So I always tell my clients, sorry, you're gonna have a little hair in your face <laughs> for this little section. And I'm going through her heart lines by making sure to cover both quadrants, the both sides. Um, and then I'm doing about a highlight with um, thickness. So this isn't like necessarily a baby light because this one's a little further back, but I am gonna weave it to make sure that we are kind of breaking it up a little bit. And I do take a longer foil and fold it. I'll lock it in place there. I'm gonna use my conditioner right here. And again, I go about an inch away, about down from the hairline. Now, if the client wants a little bit more, you could go further down. Most of my clients want to see that um, highlight piece like when they're pulling their hair back. lot of these baby hairs and again we want to be careful not getting these too too blonde but also making sure that we are including them because they are a lot all right so this is our foil pattern you guys can see it again those diagonal backs into kind of the middle piece and then we did all diagonal um, backs up into the part line so and I always leave these pieces out sometimes I'll throw a foil in there um, but for the most part, I'm not going to. We're just gonna leave that out. That's gonna act as our depth um, and then our pieces around the hairline. So um, this is just a really good go-to technique. Now I will, every time I'm done like foiling, I always go back in and check and see kind of how my blend is doing, if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, but you guys can see how that blend already is starting. Sometimes I will go back through and just kind of paint like in here just to kind of give it a little bit more pop. Um, but I just want to see like how it's already doing, if we need to resaturate, but to me this is like a really good go-to thing and I can check and see. So now we'll just let her process. We may pop her under the dryer just for a little bit, but we'll probably just keep an eye on it. And it lifted beautifully. So now we're gonna rinse her out and uh, take her back. rinsed her. I'm going to towel dry and then I'm going to apply Olaplex number two. Um, we're going to let that process for about five minutes or so while I mix up her toner. But you guys can see um, how beautiful and light we got it with the foil. So we got a lot of blonde in there, which is fun. She's excited about that. So go lay back and we'll just put some Olaplex in. All right, so these are the toners that I'm gonna be using, 9GI, 9N, 9P, and then I'm also going to mix in clear. So we're gonna do half formula of clear and then the other half equal parts of these. So I'm gonna do about an ounce of my formula, 9P, 9N, 9GI. And the reason why I like to do a warm and a cool together is because it gives a really beautiful tone and the 9GI is actually a little bit cooler than like a 9GB. So we'll do about an ounce and a third about there. And then we'll do half that formula. Clear. We do equal parts with our developer. And we'll go for the shampoo bowl. We mix up our toner and I'm actually gonna apply it over number two. And the reason why is it's allowing us to still treat the hair while it's on, but it's actually gonna dilute down my toner just a little bit more because she is pretty blonde and I wanna make sure it doesn't dull out her blonde. Um, we did dilute this half with clear, but just to ensure it to not uh, develop too quickly, it allows it to sit on a little bit more. So I am gonna apply it just over the number two. Um, and it's already towel dried and all of that, so I don't really need to worry about it too, too much. Um, I always start in the bottom when I am toning, and I always kind of start at the root area. So you guys are gonna see, I'm gonna apply it to the root area first. I want to get that working to kind of get more of that blend in there. Um, so we're always gonna apply it to the root area first, kind of work it in, making sure that it's fully saturated and then I'll pull it through the ends, but the ends are, I wanna keep pretty blonde. Um, we don't want them to get too muddy or ashy or anything like that. Then I take my wow comb. If you guys haven't heard of this, it's called a wow comb. This thing is awesome. It basically has a little turn thing in here so it turns while um, the product is being combed through and it doesn't actually collect product on here so it's not pulling the color down, it's just dispersing it evenly. And it actually helps to detangle the client's hair, which is nice. 
so you guys can see this is what it's processed to and I'm actually gonna rinse it out it's like pretty darn perfect you guys can see this beautiful tone that we're getting in there I am gonna throw a little bit of the 9GI over it um, I'm gonna rinse this out and then we'll put that on real quick So you guys can see this is what it looks like, just straightened, nice pops of blonde. I'm gonna go through texturizer cut and then we'll curl it. All right guys, so this is our final result. I'm so happy with how it turned out. It's so much blonder and it's nice because it's not too blonde, it's not too ashy, it's got a nice bit of warmth in there, but you guys can just see the gorgeous blend that we have and just how it turned out. I think it looks amazing. So definitely try this technique. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. I definitely want to answer them for you. And make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. guys so that's uh jamie dana's technique foilage uh if you're not following her on youtube please go subscribe to her channel obviously she's great um and follow her on facebook instagram all of those things uh you'll learn a lot more than just hair color you'll learn tons from her uh so go subscribe jamie dana hairstylist um all right so i have a few questions let me see here is so there was one question about um do clients that, uh, I don't know where it went, but uh, the question was basically, do clients uh, that are on the app, can non-stylists sign up for the app? No, uh, there's no customer sign up on the app. Um, you, sh you have to sign up, like that's for hairstylists only. And if I found a customer on there, uh, we would remove them and they go to the styliselocator.com website. They sign up on there and they have to create a profile before they can send you a message. So if they don't have a profile, they can't send you a message before that, uh, which is good. And that's kind of the whole point is to make sure that customers have a full profile, stylists have a full profile. And when we must start messaging each other, we can look at that profile and, um, you know, determine if that client is a good fit for us. Uh, if their hair, you know, we can talk to them about their hair, they can send the pictures and all that stuff. So you know, we want to make that conversation make sense and worth your time, not just, you know, random people sending messages, obviously. Um, so now we're going to do a little Q and a, if there's any questions, if there's not, uh, let me know. Uh, if, if you don't have any questions, that's totally fine. Uh, but we're going to end up in the show in a second. So, um, just post any questions you have post Q and then your question. So the letter Q and then your question. So I can see that. Um, let's see, uh, Jean's asking where can I get a wow comb? I'm not really sure. Um, I actually had one. Somebody sent me one once. Um, it is a pretty cool tool. So I would definitely say, uh, you know, if you can find one, but I don't, I'm not really sure. I would Google it. You could probably Google it. Um, <laughs> Gene, I think, so Gene, Gene's always on the, on the chat <laughs> and, uh, she's not a hairstylist and I think she signed up for the app and that's totally fine, but you had to go through all of the, uh, the questions about being a stylist to sign up for the app. So, uh, Gene, let's make you a customer profile. Um, I know you enjoy the show. I know you enjoy learning all this stuff. Uh, and I totally enjoy you being here and, and through the conversation and everything. Um, let's make you a customer profile on the, uh, on styliselocator.com. So just go there and sign up as a customer. Um, and then you can message any stylist in your area if you have questions about your hair or anything. And you can also obviously hang out with us um, on this show because it's fun, right? Um, Lynn's saying, I just found Johnny on Instagram. Johnny's got a sick Instagram. He does a good job with it. Um, let's see. And Johnny, I need to get you added to Skype so I can Skype you in on this show. You have Skype? Let me know. Um, cause I want to Skype and we have a, we have a hair groupie. That's right. That's fun. Um, let's see. 
<laughs> Gene. Gene, please don't lie. Because here's the thing. Like, if you sign up and you're not a stylist and a client reaches out to you, like, it doesn't work that way. It can't work that way. But we'll, we'll get you on Stylist Locator. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, Johnny, let me know your uh, Skype name so I can get you onto my call list. I need a laptop to Skype. No, you don't. This is the thing. So I used to, I used a different software before and you had to have a laptop to come on the show. Now Skype, just download the app, sign up for an account and I can add you to my list and I can just call you on Skype right from your phone. So, um, so it's even better now. Uh, it's going to be a lot more fun. So, uh, so yeah, sign up for Skype. Um, and, and any of you guys sign up for Skype because you never know. Maybe we'll have a call sometime. Maybe I'll have you on the show. So sign up for Skype. Um, let's see. Any questions, guys? Otherwise, we're gonna jump off of here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this show today. Uh, had a lot, of, had a lot of fun. Uh, it's always fun every day here on with you guys. <laughs> Q, what's Johnny's Instagram? It's Jcash the Hair Tech. And Johnny, did you? change yeah it used to be jcash underscore the hair tech i thought but now it's just jcash the hair tech official like it's just official that way um so jcash the hair tech all one word jcash the hair tech um uh, you're very welcome i'm glad you learned a lot uh i thought today was a fun show definitely you know we stayed focused on curly hair till the very end and we did that color technique that was fun um i feel like uh, this week, uh, we kind of themed every day and, and really made it more focused on a specific technique. Did you guys like that? Um, maybe I'll stick to like request Fridays um, just because I feel like, you know, when we have more of a subject, these are going to be easier searchable shows and you could really figure out exactly what you want. And maybe I can pull in new audiences um, instead of scattering it out. Um, <laughs> thanks, Gene. And then... Uh, Oh, you're very welcome, TM. You're very welcome. Uh, Lynn, thank you. So, so yeah, I think it, I think it makes sense to, to keep the shows subject-based. Um, but, like, even today, we went a little off the rail, but not too much. And I think maybe we can dedicate Fridays to that. Um, and I can pull in other artists and all of that. And I've got some guests that I'm trying to line up right now to have them on the show again uh, for next week. So that should be fun. And, bro, you better get that wedge on here or everyone's going to go crazy. It's true. We did do the wedge. We did the wedge. We did the stacked bob yesterday. It was wedgy enough. Um, Alexandra, awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank all of you. Uh, Jem, thank you so much. Um... Uh, I'm glad we don't have too many lurkers on this show. I don't think, I mean, there's some people watching, not talking, but there was a lot of talking today. I hear it. I hear the click in my headphones, uh, every time you guys chat. So, um, it definitely, I could tell that we were blowing up today and you guys were having a good time. Uh, and that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, just growing the show, you guys having a place to, to get together, talk, have fun. I mean, it was less questions today and just a lot of you guys talking to each other, which is the best. And that's what it's, that's what it should be about. Uh, <laughs> Sherry said, I'm going to hate when I have to go back to school and can't watch live every day. Well, here's the deal. Um, when we get, when we all get back. So right now we're doing it at 12 o'clock. I don't know if it's going to stay at 12. Um, and talk to your beauty school because just like, uh, the school in Illinois, where are you guys? I probably lost you in the chat. Um, trying to see where they're at. Oh, such a bummer. I'm a loser. If you guys are still watching from the school in Illinois, I forget what it was. It was like G Beauty School or something. Uh, post post your name again so I can give you guys a shout out. But uh, just like a lot of beauty schools, tons of people are uh, letting their beauty school watch the show, which is really fun. And that means a lot to me. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great way for the students to learn, to interact, and, you know, just to see what it's all about. So, um, Glennis, you're very welcome. Uh Brenda has a question, Matt. I missed your answer. Where to get the tripod? So, Brenda, good question. 
Um, so the tripod that I use is from Pivot Point. Uh, it's called the Universal Swivel, I think, Universal Swivel Tripod. Uh, it has a swiveling top, which as an educator or even a stylist, but it's an expensive tripod. I think it's like uh, a couple hundred bucks, but, um, and you can get tripods for 30 bucks. So, but they're junk and they last you three months. And then if you use it a lot, they break. Um, the universal swivel tripods, I bought a lot of them and I use them for our classes here and I use them to film and teach and just being able to move the head in all different ways and having a tripod that's heavy. Uh, it's super heavy, which is great. It's not great for travel as much, but it's great for blow drying and different things that you're doing. Even just combing the hair straight up in the air, like instead of the tripod moving all over the place. And so I, I really like that one universal swivel tripod from uh, pivot point. Uh, so you can find it on their website. Uh, expensive. It is expensive. Uh, G beauty school. That's what it is. Jane. Thank you. Um, so shout out to the students at G beauty school in Illinois. Um, she also asked if I would ever, if I'm ever there, would I stop by? If I'm ever there, I would definitely stop by. Um, I grew up in Illinois. My family lives in Illinois. So, um, it's a possibility. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Like, um, so text me, text me all the information, uh, and maybe, Maybe it'll happen someday. You never know. Um, da, 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 da. Here is my phone number. Make sure, guys, two things we need to do this weekend. Um, I'm going to be sitting here after this show doing a bunch of voiceovers. And all of those videos, all the collection of videos, all the different things that we did this week, I'm doing new voiceovers for them. And I'm putting them out as individual videos on the app first. And then they'll go out to YouTube after. So if you're on the app, obviously you'll get to see it before anybody else. You'll also get a notification when it comes out. And then the second thing I need you to do after you download the FSE Now app is to text me. Just say hi. That's all you have to do. Text hi, and then you'll get the process started. And then that will get you uh, us in communication. So anytime I do something or I just have something to say to you, or if you have something to say to me, we can text back and forth. So that's my phone number right there. Um, so make sure you do that. Other than that, I think we had a great show today. You guys, you know, a lot of fun in there. Um, link to the tripod, just go to pivotpoint.com or Google pivot point. Uh, and you'll, you'll find it on there. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I'm like 99% sure we went to the same school. Katie, are you talking to me? Um, let me pull that down. Katie, are you talking to me? Uh, what school did you go to? Um, ask again, Diana. Diana, what was your question? I'm missing everybody's questions. You got to put a Q. You got to put a Q so I see it. Yeah, Diana, ask it again. Because I don't see it on your... <laughs> Wait, Ashley did it. I see the cue here for Ashley though. When do we get to see that wedge? I have a feeling there's going to be a ride if we don't. Oh, you guys are so funny. All right. I got that cue. <laughs> yeah, I did. I went to Capri. I went to Capri College in Davenport, Iowa. So in 2004, when did you go? Put that Q. Um, so Lynn's uh, opening her salon tomorrow. She's going back in. So everybody's wished her good luck. So I'm wishing her good luck. Uh, obviously, I don't know if you need good luck, but it's going to be, uh, I can't wait to hear your feedback for it. All right, Diana's question. About the app, I see my work in other stylist profile. Why? Um, that's an interesting question because I've never seen that before. Um, so can you send me a screenshot of that and I'll get it figured out. I'll get it taken care of. Uh, text me that. Um, you can text me a, a screenshot of your of the issue. And then any of you guys, if you ever have issues with the app, texting me is the best way. 
you can text me and then um once i have your screenshot i can send it to the developer and be like what's going on with this um that's not a normal thing that that obviously shouldn't happen and we'll get it removed from wherever it is but you just got to show me uh where your work is on somebody else's profile and then we'll get it figured out for sure like right away so don't worry about that um but thanks for signing up there's obviously we built this thing from scratch so uh fse now is kind of like it's a platform that obviously every single day um we're learning new things and maybe something functions weird uh but we get it fixed quickly and right away so don't don't worry about that kind of stuff, but you gotta let me know because otherwise I don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. Um, let's see. All right, cool. I think that's it. All right, guys, good luck, Lynn. Uh, tomorrow, opening up. Congratulations on opening up. Um, you know, hopefully we're all not too far behind you in that way. And uh, thank you guys so much for a great week. Um, it was so fun. You know, I really enjoy this show. I enjoy connecting with you guys every day and just having you guys be a part of, you know, this community that we're building, seeing you guys on FSC, FSC now, I can't talk on FSC now. And then also seeing you guys in the chat, building your relationships. Uh, it's super cool. So, um, so that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys on Monday and have a lot of fun. Uh, check out the app real quick, and then um, when we get done, we're going to go. Okay, so here it is. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> Gene, we'll see you later. Thank you guys so much. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. See you guys.